Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of the Puerto Rico Skyview channel. My name is Emanuel Santiago and today I'm bringing you value. For today's video, we're going to talk about those moments when you are picking up your camera, you're shooting in log or you're shooting in those um, standard color profiles. You're shooting and thinking, man, this footage looks so great. It looks so colorful. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Well, and when you import your, your footage, you open your Premiere Pro, you color grade it, you are excited about, uh, about uh, how this shoot came out. And when you see the export, your colors look like this. But you don't have to worry anymore because I have the solution and the tools all for free for your footage to look as you intend. In this example, let's take a look at that same clip that I showed you with desaturated colors when I applied this process that I'm about to give you guys. Awesome difference, right? So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. Let's go ahead and launch Premiere Pro, which I've already done. I already set my clips, imported my clips, and they look like this. Uh, so you can see CLOG2 is a really uh, flat profile. This looks almost colorless, but um, Canon has made easy to color grade CLOG2. They have provided LUTs that um, enable your footage to look as you see on the, on the display using the uh, view assist uh, built into the C70. I believe that this uh, C-Log2 LUTs that I'm about to show you, they work on the EOS R5, EOS R, and other cameras as well. Since they include C-Log2, C-Log3, and C-Log1 um, picture profiles for you to um, import into Premiere Pro or your editing software of choice. So, as you can see, the files play, play really nicely. That's one of my favorite things of the C70 that the files play through as smooth as butter. Okay, so now to color grade them, you have to open your Lumetri color panel on Premiere Pro if you are using Premiere Pro. And if you go down to creative, you're gonna see here that um, we often use this part to upload your LUTs. But in this case, in the case of the um, Canon picture profiles, since I have loaded them into Premiere Pro itself, they're going to be under the basic correction panel. You're going to go into the basic correction panel, input LUT, and here you're going to go ahead. If you're shooting, I was, in my case, I was shooting this on Cinema Gamut. This is the way to read them. Cinema Gamut, C-Log2, which I have my, my cursor right here. Uh, it says here to BT2020. I was not shooting in BT2020. BT2020 is for HDR, um, an HDR work, workspace. You are uh, shooting in BT709 if you're shooting for YouTube or um, social media content for that matter. So we're gonna drop down here until it says, okay, Canon Lock Cinema Gamut, Canon Lock 2, which I was shooting. BT709 YDR65. You, uh, this number right here at the end is the number of iterations that the uh, LUT has built in, Be and and that's really good because it it means that um, the color information, the shadow and highlight information, it's gonna be more accurate than if this number at the end of the LUT would be uh, lower. Because when you open the package that contains all the slots, you're gonna have uh, like 65, 1 for 30, and 1 for 15. And uh, there's a lot of confusion about those. I just deleted the, the ones lower than 65, since I see that 65 produces the more accurate results. In summary, when you download this from Canon, just erase uh, the 1D LUTs and the ones that say uh, values lower than 65. Okay. So, with one click, and look at those colors. They already look 
very saturated, very contrasty, real nice. These colors, um, these LUTs provide a really nice base for our uh, color grading. So um, there might be some tweaks that you can do to them in order for them to look um, as good as possible. I always look into my histograms right here. I have the parade waveform which separates into red, green, and blue. And that gives me a sense of um, white balance. It, it lets me see more accurately if my white balance is, is good. And as we can see here, the white balance, almost perfect. A little high on the red side, a little warm, but that's how I like it. Oftentimes, white balance, I see, I see it as a preference, uh, bias, uh, <laughs> sort of uh, aspect when color grading. Um, I'm gonna, uh, as always, go into curves and I'm gonna adjust a little bit the curve, create a little bit of an S curve, so we get a little bit more out of that image, a little bit more contrast. Okay, and I always lift off the shadows because I don't want to, uh, the footage looking all crunched up. I want uh, a, a, to give a cinematic vibe and I think that by lifting up that low end on that curve, it really uh, brings up that darkness and makes, it, makes the transition between darkness to highlights a lot smoother. So I'm happy with this one, let's move on to the next one. To the next one, the same thing, we're gonna go to input on the basic correction panel. We're gonna go down, find Cinema Gamut C-Log2 to BT-709, BT wide dynamic range, wide DR. You're gonna click it, boom. Those colors bring the image to life, huh? So this image, um, as I see here on my uh, Instagram, I see that I can bring a little bit more saturation into it. The histogram, yes, it is stretched fairly, but I think that we can make it a little bit more colorful. Let's bring those greens up by adding a little bit more saturation. Let's go into the curve. Really nice S curve, like the other one. It's already there. And um, let's adjust for whites. Let's making make them 95. I always like the highlights. My highlights at 90 here. If you look at the Instagram, 90, around 90, 95, the highest values here. And um, I, th I think that this is uh, looking a little bit greenish, but um, it is because the green areas on my footage are the brightest. So not to worry there. Let's add a little bit more contrast so we can get those tones a little bit more stretched. Uh, let's add vibrance to see how that will affect. Okay, yeah, vibrance. I think that this image is, uh, is really ready to go. So when exporting the footage, if I were to hit Command M and bring forward the export settings table or window, I, uh, I often uh, use certain values here to achieve the best quality possible when exporting to YouTube. I'm gonna uh, walk through uh, those settings right now. So, um, let's the format H.264. You can choose um, MOV or QuickTime, which will produce MOV as well. I, per I, sh I personally choose uh, H.264 more often. And under video, you're gonna um, see that your 4K here, I shot 4K DCI, so it's gonna show us uh, 4096. And okay, 2160 was shot in 24 frames per second or 23.96. And um, here, this is very important. Hit render at maximum depth, really important right there. The profile is gonna look like this when you first open this uh, settings, settings window, but I always set it to high. Not to high 10 because high 10 is for HDR uh, color space. So, okay. And here, the bitrate settings. This is the most important to achieve the highest quality possible. 
you're gonna go and set this to CBR and the target bitrate for 4k it's gonna be for me in my case 65 I think it produces um, very high quality files and the file size is not gonna be so huge that even social media um, Instagram you can post them to Instagram and it will handle them pretty pretty much if you want to see samples of this footage and this uh, bitrate setting uh, go to my Instagram it's PR underscore skyviews I'm gonna um, keep uploading uh, videos so you can see the high quality that I am able to get on Instagram because Instagram compression is trash that's no secret okay let's continue now at the really uh, at the very bottom part of this uh, settings window you're gonna click this one which says use render maximum render quality but before you hit Q or render you have to make sure that you do this small step that I'm gonna provide you with um, the file uh, that I'm about to show you because this is the magic to achieving high contrast very rich colors when exporting to YouTube or exporting to um, your device from Premiere Pro so you're gonna go to effects and as you can see here this would look like this when you first open it okay so you see the image and you say like oh uh, colors are nice on that image the colors look good but there's a catch to that because if you don't do this step your colors are gonna be desaturated regardless okay so the simple step is to choose here the lumetri LUT go to select at the very top and you're gonna go and look for this file it's called the QT gamma compensation dot cube and what this file does is um, it, it's gonna bring to life those files it's gonna make them look as they look on you on your sequence on Premiere Pro it's gonna make your footage look as intended okay so you're gonna hit open hit open and it's gonna say none I don't know what's the bug here I don't know what's happening here it's gonna say none but if you uncheck the effect it's gonna show you desaturated colors so you want to have this checked and then you are ready to move to media encoder media encoder um, some people like to use the Premiere Pro uh, straight out of the Premiere Pro but I always like to render my files on the media encoder let's name this file real quick let's say bonsai yeah bonsai b-roll hit enter and let's uh, render this video so as you can see the M1 Pro ship on this laptop is amazing um, it is XFAVC and um, the audio is for 24 bit audio uh, on this video so as you can see the the footage is being rendered at a really nice pace and um, I if you can see here on the preview, on the output preview, you can already see the richness in colors, and it's really it's really satisfying because I think that Premiere Pro has one of the best interfaces for grading your footage and for uh, processing your video files uh, in a more professional manner. So it's uh, it's there. It's done. Let's go open and um, preview this file and as you can see the colors let me go ahead and open uh, this next to my uh, sequence right here so you guys can see a side by side if you see if you can see here the same colors are achieved from Premiere Pro to your uh, um, files no desaturation no um, low contrast very contrasty image and very well colored so guys if you want to keep learning if you have found this video useful please consider to subscribe and I will be making videos each and every week gear reviews tutorials like this one starting conversation with you guys have been amazing 
I appreciate all the support from my subscribers, my current subscribers. I think you guys are awesome. If you have any issues downloading the footage, um, I mean, downloading the QT Gamma Compensation .cube file from Google Drive, please let me know. Leave me a comment down below and I will gladly assist you. I think you guys are amazing. See you guys on my next video.